Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Word's Navigation Pane. When you are utilizing the Navigation Pane, it will appear on the left side of your document. From the Navigation Pane, you can do multiple features such as finding text, finding formatting, um, you have additional search options, there is advanced find, including searching using wildcards, searching for special characters. You can do find and replace of text, formatting, formatting and text. And you also have the ability to search for graphics, tables, equations, footnotes, endnotes, and comments. You can also use navigation pane as your go-to. So if you want to go to pages, go to sections, you can do that as well. It also has a pages view, so you can see the thumbnails for all the pages within your document. So you can quickly peruse through large documents. It also has a headings view. So if you're using heading styles in your document, those headings will appear in the navigation pane and you can quickly navigate using it and also use the headings in the navigation pane to do manipulation of your document. Now, as you can see, the navigation pane is a feature rich option. So there's a lot of information we're going to be going over. So what I'm going to do is break this into multiple videos. The first video I'm going to do is just a general overview of the navigation pane. This will get you using the basic functions of the navigation pane. From there, I'll break out some of the advanced functions into additional videos, such as advanced find features that are available um, using wildcards and special characters. I'll do another video on find and replace um, for text, as well as formatting, how you can search and replace different types of formatting. I'll do a video on the go to feature and then I'll end on a video on the headings view and pages view so that I can go over in more detail all of these functions. As I'm adding the new videos, I'll add the links below. I'll also add a link below to my blog that gives you the instructions for using each one of these functions and features. I have switched over to a sample document so we can go ahead and get started. There are multiple ways that you can activate the navigation pane. If you like shortcuts, it's control F that will bring it up. The X at the top right corner is what will close it. You can also come over to the view, come over to the show group and check the box for navigation pane and that will turn it on as well. Now I like to work with the navigation pane on, especially when I'm working with my larger documents that have lots of headings in them. It's up to you whether you like it on or off. And if you just want to open it up when you're using it to do searches or navigate through your document, that's fine. If you don't remember shortcut keys and you don't want to always click on the view tab to activate it, you can also add it to your quick access toolbar. Now I've got my quick access toolbar up here on the top of my document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the drop down so I can add the navigation pane to my quick access toolbar. When I click on it, I'm going to come down to more commands. It's going to open up the word options window. From here, what I'm going to do is change the choose commands from from the popular commands to all commands. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click within the commands so that it knows this is the area I'm working in and I'm going to hit N. So it takes me down to the first end for commands. And now I can scroll through until I find the navigation pane. Highlight it and click add. Now, of course, I can use my arrows to move it wherever I want. I'm just going to leave it where it is and click OK. So now if I close out the navigation pane, come to my quick access toolbar and click on it, it will open it up from there as well. So you've got multiple ways to get to it. Here, let me close it first. You can also come over to the home tab editing group and click find and it will open it up as well. So now that you know how to open it, let's go ahead and start using it. When you want to do a search, all you need to do is come over to the search field, click within it and type in your search word. So for instance, if I wanted to find the word outline, I type it in, hit enter, and it's going to pull up my results. Now, as you can see below my search field, it tells me how many results are found within my document. There's multiple ways to that I can get to these results within my document. Okay. If I come over to the right of results, I've got my up and down arrows and this will navigate me down through them or back up through them so I can see each one of them. I've also got snippets of where the words were found. So I can read the information here to see if this is one I want to look at, go to the next one. I can click on any of these to get to it as well. 
if I come over to my headings tab, it will show me the headings where this information is. So for instance, this one is highlighted. This is the only heading that has my search terms in it. Pages will show me the pages where my words are found as well. So there's multiple ways that I can get to the information once I've done my search for it. Okay, let's come back over to our navigation pane and let's go ahead and clear our search. In order to clear the search, you could click and then you could backspace through it all or we can just click the X and that will clear out our search. If we come over to our drop down arrow under find, we have additional options that we can search for. We can search for graphics, tables, equations, footnotes, endnotes, and comments. So for instance, if I wanted to go through and look at the graphics within my document, click on graphics. And again, it's going to show me the results, showing me which result I'm on. Right now I'm on my 47th of 50. If I come over to my headings, it's going to show me all the headings that my graphics are in. I've got my page view. If I click on the results, this is a little bit different when you're doing the searches for graphics um, and different things like this instead of text. It's not going to show you snippets of it under results. Instead, it's telling you to go over and look under your headings or pages tabs to see that information. So if I come to my pages, I can scroll through the pages to look at all my graphics. Let's clear that out. We'll come over and we'll do a search for comments. Now, when you do a comment search, it's going to ask you whose comments you want to search for. Do you want to search for all reviewers or specific reviewers of the document? So I'm just going to come down and I'm going to choose me. And again, the results is going to tell me to come back over and look at my headings or pages so I can go through and look at my comments. Quick and easy way to get to your comments and see what's going on in the document. Let's clear that out. Do a sample of footnotes and endnotes. So I can quickly go through my document and see where my footnotes and endnotes are within the document. Here is number two. If I double click on it, it will take me down to it. So again, just different things that you can search for within your document. And again, I'll be going over this information in more detail in later videos, which I will link below. But in this video, I just want to give you a broad overview so you get a sense of what you can do with it and begin using it. I'm going to clear out that one click my drop down and go to replace. When I do this, it's going to bring up the find and replace dialog box. Remember, it's the last thing, thing I did, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna clear this out. So I'm starting fresh with a new find and replace. So I've moved the box so it's out of my way. I'm gonna search for headings and replace it with titles. Okay, I have different options that are available when you're doing this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the find next. It found heading so I can see if this is one I want to replace. And since it's part of this and this one I don't want to. So if I hit the find next, what it's going to do is skip this. Go to the next one. I can replace it. Or if I know I want to replace that with replace all of headings within my document with um, titles, I can tell it to replace all. I'm just going to go ahead and tell it to replace this one and it finished searching. So that's how you can use the find and replace, the simplified find and replace when you're searching for words that you want to replace. Now you do have lots of features available with this. I can tell it to match the case on here, find only whole words, use wildcards. I can also come down under special and tell it that I'm looking for certain characters within here. So if I wanted to look for um, where I had double paragraph markings and wanted to replace it with a single paragraph marking, I could do that as well. So you've got lots of abilities from here. Another option that you have available with find and find and replace is formatting. Now, one thing I want to point out, I can see all these features on my find and replace screen. If you don't see this, and yours looks more like this, all you need to do is click the more button and it will open it up so that you can see this information. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and clear out what I've got here because what I wanna do now is I wanna do a format, find and replace. So I'm going to come up and click within the find what area. And this time I'm going to come down and click on the format button. And it's going to give me a list of everything that I can search for. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna search for fonts. I want to find bold and italic, and I want to replace it with underline. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come over to the font style. Now I'm not going to pick bold and then highlight italic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click bold and italic because I want both of them. So I'm going to click that and say OK. Now if there's more I wanted to do, I could come down and hit the format button again and choose more features. That's all I want from here. So I'm going to come down to my replace area. Now when you're doing find and replace, for um, formatting, it's a little bit different for some of them than other ones. For instance, when I want to replace the bold and italic with underlining, I just don't choose underline and it'll remove the bold and italic. I have to have it remove that first. So what I'm going to do when I click on format is I'm going to take tell it to make it regular. I don't want bold and italic on it anymore. And then I'm going to tell it I want to underline words only and say OK. So I've got everything I want here. It's not going to be bold. It's not going to be italic anymore. And I'm going to underline the words. So I'm going to hit find next so I can find the first one within here. And here it found it. Now you'll notice this is in color because I didn't tell it a specific color. So it just says anywhere where I have bold and italic, find it. So if I tell it to replace this, it replaces it and it takes me to the next one. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to replace all. It found nine of them, say OK, and you can see here it took off the bold and italic. Let's go ahead and close this out. If I come over to my Home tab, you can see I've got this highlighted. There is no bold and italic anymore, but it is underlined. OK? So that's how that works. Always remember when you're taking away functions such as um, bold, italic, and things like that, you need to tell it to take those away. You just don't replace it with um, underlines. So I wanted to make it regular before I added my new features. One thing I wanted to show you with this, let's come back in and do another, like we're going to do another search. If I want to remove my options so I can do another search, what you're going to do is you're going to click in each one of the fields and tell it no formatting. So go ahead and close that out. And there's a lot more function and features available within this. And I'll go over that in another video. The next feature I want to show you is the go to feature. If we come over to our navigation pane and we click our drop down, we have our go to feature here. Once we click on it, it's going to open up our find and replace dialog box and take us directly to the go to tab. And from here, I can tell it what page, what section, um, what bookmarks and so forth that I want to go to. So for instance, if I wanted to move ahead two pages, I will enter plus two and it takes me ahead two pages. This comes in real handy if you need to move from section to section within your document quickly. So I'll go ahead and close that out. Another way that you can get to go to, besides adding it up here to your quick access toolbar, is if on your status bar you have your um, sections listed and your pages listed, you can get to it from here as well. So if I click on my page button, it will open it up and I can go to my page and tell it where I want to go. Also my section will do the same thing. And again on the navigation pane, click the drop down, go to, or we can go ahead and add it to our quick access toolbar as well if you prefer. Now we've already talked about the pages view a little bit, but I just want to go back into it and um, just go over it one more time. Pages will give you a thumbnail of each of the pages within your document so you can quickly scroll through and get to an area that you want to look at. The final feature that I want to show you is the headings. Now we had looked at the headings when we were doing our search and it highlighted each of the heading headings that had our search terms within it. But what I want to look at now is just the headings on itself. What the headings does is it will give you, if you are using heading styles, a snippet for all of your headings and it gives you arrows so you can expand and collapse the information. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up a different document that has a lot of headings in it so you can see in more detail what it looks like. So here is a larger document that has a lot of headings within it. And as you can see, it makes it very easy to move from area to area within my document. With the headings, in addition to being able to navigate through them, I can collapse and expand. 
So if I want to make sure my areas or my headings are following properly, I can do that as well. This comes in handy if you're troubleshooting a table of contents and things look out of order. You can see if your headings are correct or if you've got something listed as a heading two when it should really be a heading three and so forth. Now also with the headings, I can do right clicks and I get lots of options available too where I can demote things, promote things. I can move headings, I can delete headings. Um, now when you delete it, it's going to delete the heading and everything below it that's part of that heading. So it includes the seven headings and so forth. And all of this information I'm going to go over in more detail in an additional video. Um, but I just wanted to give you an overview so you can see all the information that's available with it. And this is one of the reasons I like to keep my navigation pane up, to use the heading area as I'm navigating through it and keeping track of where I am within my document. So this gives you a broad overview of all the functions and features that are available within the navigation pane. Remember, Control F will open it. If you don't want the navigation pane open any longer, click the X to close it. I can also come over to the View tab, Show Group, and turn it on from here, or I can add it to my quick access toolbar. It gives you the ability to do quick searches. I have my drop down option, so I can do my advanced searches, my find and replace. I can go to areas within my document. I can also search for graphics, tables, equations, footnotes, comments. I can uh, navigate through my document via my search results, my headings, and my pages. And again, I'm going to go over different aspects within the navigation pane in more detail in um, later videos, and I will put the links below. I will also put the link below to um, the information in my blog if you want to print that out as well. Also, if you have any questions or want me to go over anything in more detail, please add comments below. Thank you.